smart grids smart cities it's a it's a journey i think we are in the midst of a revolution and please when we talk about radical economic revolution we don't mean keep everything the same there has to be change right and that's exactly where we are we are in the midst of a huge change and it's a change that if we don't manage and control uh, and properly designed will end up with a lot of sunk costs okay so i'm going to talk about ict technology as an enabler for the changes that we need to see in south africa's municipalities so let me just give you a, a bit of a, a a scenario for that of course the i will go through the presentation in terms of uh, the smart city smart and obviously they are all linked to each other uh smart city framework so what is it smart city uses information technology uh ict to enhance livability workability and of course sustainability it involves three core functions and uh, barry in his presentation you know set the groundwork for all of that you need to collect information you need to be able to uh, or data you need to convert and, uh, that data into knowledge information and you need to be able to share it and you need to be able to also analyze that data to produce useful information out of it otherwise it's pointless collecting it now why what's what's driving uh, smart cities growing urbanization the, according to world economic forum we are likely to see about 70% of our populations migrating into cities so as a result of that you're going to see growing stresses i mean i don't know what it uh, a commute from pretoria to johannesburg in the morning takes my colleagues 3 hours right and if you try and do that for every day in a year that's crazy right in inadequate infrastructure i mean at the distribution level and i'll focus more on the municipal level we have an industry infrastructure backlog uh, 2014 the study done by the doe that talks about 70 billion right where is the money going to come from for that growing economic competition guys we are you know what people don't understand is we are within a country we are competing for resources each city is competing for economic development the talented resources to sustain their development and growth but equally so as countries we are competing so when it comes to skills the idea that we are loyal to to land is is a myth that we must dispel people will move, go where the work is and people will go where the, the the money is right so we obviously need to be cognizant of that in in our planning uh, for competition now you know i have a phone i can do all virtually everything that i used to do i don't need to even need to carry my my laptop right and uh, so i can do my banking i can do pay my bills i can call uh, uber all of that stuff out of this device and so of course from a customer experience point of view there's a growing expectation of the ease of doing things right and especially for your generation x type of uh, you know uh, the, the the what you call them those that were born after 94 95 after our new dispensation and and for them they you know they don't know the challenges that we've grown up grown from and uh, so there's a growing expectation from a customer point of view for efficiency for effectiveness and our municipalities in south africa are completely antiquated right there's obviously the whole issue of the environmental challenges rapidly growing technology and of course technology you know more as law applies uh, in the ict space and 
and still valid till today. Now, smart city is about, and I've adapted it from the, the smart city council work, where it's about the services that we, a municipality provides, with those being the key enablers. There are 10 key enablers for that to happen. And if you look at the, from instrumentation downwards, all are ICT related. Inclusivity is about getting, engaging, because we are a democracy, it's about getting your citizens buying into that future vision of where we're going. Collaboration is about the platform that uh, Prof spoke about earlier on, creating it, testing it, right? But because it's so IT laden, the investments we make and how we make those investments needs to be properly governed. And so the governance, the whole adoption of COBIT in this environment is very, very important. Uh, and in the municipal environment, the whole ICT space is going to be, have to be governed through the councils. Right? And if those councils are not savvy enough, they will make investments in wrong technology and, and take wrong decisions. So, in, uh, you know, spelling this out, you know, you can see, uh, looking at it from several dimensions, what a, a current city is and where we are like today and where we need to go. Right? And at the heart of that is this level here of ICT investments. Currently, we, uh, it's piecemeal, it's siloed. Uh, you know, we make investments into, I mean, uh, we were part of Eskom team when we, when we rolled out Maximo and we wondered what we were going to do with this thing, right? But it's only like 10 years later when we started to populate the data and we started to, we're now starting to see the value of those investments. Uh, you know, you don't realize economy of scales and, you know, IT, IT spend in most organizations, including the, the public sector, is going to be a, a big investment going forward. And the, and the problem is, the technology currently is antiquated. We've been talking about grid investments, but actually the, the technology to manage visibility and control is completely outdated and the investments lag many, many years. So, linked to that, and uh, sorry, just to go back there, you know, electricity, energy, transport, e-mobility are all linked. Right, so when you do your planning, you cannot start your planning for, at a municipal level, just talking about electricity, or transport. You have to have this framework that is cutting across all of these aspects, all of these aspects, right? Synchronized, right? And if you're not, you know, doing this at that level, then you're going to end up with some cost and probably technology that doesn't talk to each other. So going into smart grids now. So a lot of uh, of what. I have here is you know been covered by uh, by Rob. So what you're seeing in the tr the trends internationally is you're moving from centralized to decentralized. You're moving from conventional to renewable. You're moving from uh, fixed to flexible. Right, but of course that comes with critical uh, obstacles. You're seeing grid instability issues. Right. You're going to see congestion. And in Europe, we're already seeing, and in the Americas, we're seeing the volatile markets. And we, as a country, you know, depending on where we, uh, how we, uh, you know, allow this to roll out, it's going to have, a, this, the, the markets issue is going to become a very, very important for us. Now, our IRP talks about 32% renewables, into our grid in the next 10 years. For all the, you know, the, the, the capital investment that we're going to have to make in the next 10 years, we're talking about 32% being renewables. Now, renewables can be anywhere. 
And the RP seems to think that it's going to be centrally generated. But what it's not accounting for is the fact that you're going to have rooftop PVs coming up. And just, you know, th this morning I downloaded the Ikurileni ta tariffs for, so the inclining block tariffs. And very interestingly enough, above 700 kilowatt hours of usage a month, you're going to pay six rand a kilowatt hour. Is it? It's published, it's on the, it's on the website, that's what I've got. <laughs> so, it's, uh, I mean, if that was the way it is, then the debt spiral is on. The debt spiral, I mean, Eskom will probably never recover from this. Right, now, internationally, and as uh, Rob alluded to it, to deal with this situation, you're going to have to have smart grids, and you're going to have intelligent markets. But to deal with intelligent markets, the question we have to ask in our country is, you know, is it correct to be dealing with it at an ISMO level, or should we actually be talking about a dismal level? Centralized, decentralized, right? Because uh, this, this renewables is going to appear within municipal boundaries, and you're going to have to manage it. Okay? And again, the key, and the, the, the first one is visibility and control. I'm going to have active elements coming up into my grid from at household level, which is the LV level, where I have very little visibility and control. Right? And so my whole scaler is going to have to migrate down to that level. When are we going to do that? Right? The whole issue of security becomes very, very important. Standardization. Now, in South Africa, as a country, we municipalities aren't competing with each other. So it's not a competition-based market. But, and it creates a perfect platform to actually standardize technology across systems, processes, including the way we design the grid, which ESCOM through the NRS process is actually dealing with. So you can standardize all of that. And then, of course, because smart cities, smart grids as is really about a system of systems, systems engineering, integration, interoperability, all those become critical issues. And of course, you have to take the people with you. Change management is going to be key. So, of course, there's obviously key drivers uh, to this, and really, you're going to see the renewables playing a, 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 a bigger, significant role. But at the municipal level, this is a reality. We have an aging workforce. Our operational efficiencies are really, really in question. Customer satisfaction is low. And we are in, in, most of our municipalities are in a financial distress. And if you, you know, look at it from, a, from the, the recent uh, AG report and uh, the uh, Treasury reports, you find age of our facilities, average age of our distribution infrastructure is about 48 years old. Cost of revenue is on the rise. In fact, cost exceeds revenue. Reliability demands, if, if business is going to survive, you need reliability of, uh, and, and quality of supply. But at the same time, at the municipal level, the budgets are declining. You don't have the skills to, to uh, you know, for this journey. Outstanding debt, municipal outstanding debt, sits June, at the end of June 2019, at 165 billion. Right? That is at the distribution level. But it doesn't seem to be a crisis because our government tends to be only focusing on on Eskom, whereas we, we have a crisis in the entire value chain that needs to be attended to. Pricing, I mean, six rand for a kilowatt hour, I mean, that's ridiculous if that's true. But it's, it's, it's on, the, on the equivalent letterhead. Customer service is all over the place, maintenance is just not happening, there's no money for it. So it's like getting into a car and driving until it breaks down, and then worrying about what to do. 
That's simply what it is. So smart grids cuts across all of these aspects. It's firstly a vision, and as South Africa, we've been able to, uh, together with the industry, been able to put together a smart grid vision, an economically evolved, technology-enabled electricity system that is intelligent, interactive, flexible, effective, efficient, and will enable South Africa's energy use to be sustainable and for future generations. But more importantly, it's a system of systems. And so the planning and the complexity that we are talking about in a municipal environment never existed before. And we're going to have to deal with it at that level. <coughs> so we have this vision uh, document, which in summary, it talks about the principal characteristics. It talks about the uh, performance criteria, the technology areas. Uh, sorry about this, the slide. Uh, and of course, the key success factors. So what is important is we took the key success factors and matched it to the technology areas. And this was the work done by NREL. And what you see is, if you look at the, the colors there, match the, the, the colors, the, the, the key success factor areas. And you find that ICT and AMI fill all the blocks, all six blocks. And that becomes your low hanging fruit. If you want to start your, your journey, you have to focus on your ICT aspects, which is your back office visibility and control aspects, and start with your revenue and your meetings, because and by doing that, you're giving LV visibility and control. Right? So, what is the smart grid? Well, it's made up of three infrastructures, the, the, the power grid, the comms infrastructure, and the ICT, right? And that, so in the US, we obviously refer to ICT plus sensors as the IntelliGrid, in, which is in, in, the, in the EU, they, they tend to call it a smart grid, right? And if you look at it from a, from a regulation point of view, the actual physical grid Policies are decided by the Department of Energy and regulated by NASA. But the smart grid is really meant to be driven by uh, DPSA and COCTA. So you have these dual regulation systems that need to talk to each other, right? And now the, the issue is this layer here and that layer here Standardization is not on the agenda. Nobody's doing it. Why? Because that is actually going to, if you look at the investment that needs to be made in that space, it's huge. Now the question is, are we going to have 257 smart grids in this country? Or should we intuitively actually have one? And if I may you know, bring that argument, I would argue that actually Eskom is there already. Should we have one regulated ESKIM grid, right? And municipalities separate the, the grid from the, the retail part and let the municipalities deal with the retail. Just an idea. So, of course, it's an, from a smart grid point of view, there's multiple systems that have to talk to each other and need proper planning, proper design, proper testing before it's rolled out. I don't know whether it's going to be 257 smart grids, and these are some of the basic things that we're going to need for that, or do we have one? And, and I would argue that Eskim has got a lot of this done already. Uh, so these are the list of the systems that we are talking about. Uh, so our, from a scenario point of view, we've put together a roadmap of all the different technologies that you need to start working with to make the system work, and you will see the f the, the, f the top ones is really the customer-focused ones. The second one is the information-based ones. So those two areas of technologies, right, which is about 10 technologies in that space, are actually common to a smart city. You know, you can't talk about asset management for electricity. 
you have to talk about asset management for a municipality which covers el electricity, water, roads, and so on, based on a standard design. Yeah? And then you have specific operational technologies that may be relevant only to a certain area, and that also has to be managed collectively. So through the work that we've done at Sinedi, what is very important in this journey is people, processes, technology. But ultimately, that's internal to a municipal environment. What we must never, ever forget is that the customer is king. So we need to move and migrate from a utility-centric view to actually understanding what it is, means to be customer-centric. Right? And we need to be able to create the enabling platforms so that we can communicate and deal with our customer effectively and efficiently. So, based on the work that we've done, we've come up with what is called a, a smart utility in a box, essentially saying, for instead of having each municipality trying to move on its own journey, let's create a platform where we can test, develop, do all the development, do all the ironing out for systems, processes, technology, training, the whole bank shoot, and give it as a standardized package to municipalities to run. Rather than trying to leave them at their own will, which you know the, our constitution allows, but and, and, and of course, in that way, you'll be able to standardize the entire back office of municipalities. Right? You'll be able to bring the cost down. Right? So we can have the uh, 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 deal of this. And then, of course, uh, if you look, look, looked at what the Prof was talking about, if you can move all of this into the cloud, it becomes even easier. Right? Just an example of uh, success story. You know, we've, we've started with the AMI journey, so where we put in some smart meters at, in the Tigrani. They took the vending system, which was uh, uh, contracted out. They put in an MDMS. They, they did work with the customer informa information system. They spent about 66 million on the project, had a payback in six months, and improved bottom line revenue for a Tigwani by 11 million a month. Just by using technology. Right? So, this is my last slide. Just some critical takeaways. I think we have to appreciate that our municipalities are in a financial crisis and something needs to be done urgently. And, you know, this is the whole issue of radical economic transformation we mean we can't keep it the same, it has to change. Technology becomes a critical enabler for this change. Smart city, smart grid, our visions, as well as systems, and they can enable that change. But it's going to take political will, and it's going to take commitment to, to get us there. So smart cities, smart cities the, the smart metering systems, need proper strategic planning, so you start the planning at the top, understanding where we're going as a country, for, and setting the scene for where, what our future municipalities should look like. But implementation actually starts at the bottom. And that journey should start with the AMI, because we don't have that visibility in that space. Right? Of course, you know, the whole debate between OT and IT is, and, and the convergence of those networks needs to be dealt with in that space. You know, uh, smart grids is, is an ICT system of systems, right? Standardization of the back office systems will reduce cost for municipality implementations. So South African municipalities are not in competition and can leverage standardization. <laughs> you can standardize policies, st strategies, structure, systems, processes, technology, training, and the customer experience ultimately across all municipalities can also be the same. So the question I leave with is, do we have 257 municipalities, um, smart grids, or should we actually be considering 
one regulated grid in this country. Thank you. Thank you.